Hello, my name is Winnie. I hope you're doing well today. This video is the start of a new series that I'm going to be starting on my channel. A little let's build series, I guess. If you haven't seen my little trailer I put out the other day, it showcased just a brief little bit of a new save that I'm creating. And this is one of the many builds I have created, or at least the start of the many builds that I will be creating. <laughs> I have already created another save file, but in that one, I only built some of the houses or residential areas, whereas in this one, I will be creating every single one. And mostly it'll help me, I guess, explore my creative boundaries, especially when it comes to building, because personally, I don't think I'm the greatest, but I've been enjoying building as of late and one of my favorite things as well is to personalize the homes for like my sims families and stuff in the save i will be recreating a lot of uh families from previous games not only the sims 2 but like the sims 3 and then other like expansions of the sims this house is owned by the caps and if you're familiar with The Sims 2, they're from Veronaville. I really apologize for any background noise there might be in this video. It's midday, and uh, unfortunately, I live around a lot of people who apparently ride motorbikes or motorcycles, whatever, and it's highly annoying. If you're not familiar with The Sims 2, there are three pre-made worlds that you can play coming with the base game one being Pleasant View, two being Veronaville, and three being Strangerville? Strang- no, Strangetown. <laughs> Which in my other save file that I created, I did implement a lot of Pleasant View families as well as Strangetown families. Which in this save, I really wanted to implement a lot of other families, not only from Pleasant View and Strangetown, but Veronaville and then any other expansions of The Sims games. Especially since The Sims 4 is very lackful when it comes to lore. A lot of other games are really rich with lore. So I really wanted to bring that back. And if you're not familiar with Veronaville and the families that are that reside there, it is very heavily based off of the story of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. And personally, Romeo and Juliet is one of my favorite stories. I really enjoy how tragically ironic it is. I know a lot of people don't really enjoy Romeo and Juliet, but I I do. One of my favorite movies of Romeo and Juliet, too, is the one with Leonardo DiCaprio. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you at least check it out. It's a modern day Romeo and Juliet. Anyways, like I said, I want to build this whole save file from the ground up honestly, just so that I can explore my creative abilities with building. I'm not exactly sure why I started with a giant mansion, but I think it turned out pretty well. I did have to cut down a lot of the footage, so I did not record me decorating the front or like the surrounding of the house, even though I am extremely proud of what I did out there. There will be a little mini, like, I don't know, overview of the, the, whole, the whole entire house. I did have a really difficult time putting together the kitchen. Um, it was quite annoying, honestly, but I worked with what I gave myself and I think it turned out all right. I did have a difficult time with the dining room and like the split from the kitchen to the dining room. In the movies and such, I know the Capulets are really known for throwing parties and stuff, but I feel like the Caps would really kind of keep to themselves and then maybe the Montes will be the ones to throw a lot of parties. The Caps home is in Windenburg and I will be putting the Montes in Del Sol Valley. That's another thing that I really wanted to try to do with the save file is pretty much intermingle all of the worlds. Since I do own every pack, I would like to imagine that all of the worlds are, in a sense, 
connected in some type of way especially since you can just jump between worlds whereas in other games you aren't able to do that especially in like the sims 2 you definitely can't transfer a family unless you put them in the bin and then they lose all their relationships and then same thing with sims 3 you can move them out of the world that they live in but again they lose all their relationships once they go to that new town whereas the sims 4 you don't lose any of your relationships and you can move from world to world so i feel like doing that it makes the gameplay a little bit better so with the save i would say that i highly re recommend that you do have majority of the expansions or game packs or whatever i think only game expansion packs give us new worlds but i would highly recommend using it that way but of course you don't have to you just won't have some of the families that are in other worlds in my personal gameplay i do use a lot of custom content creating the save file not only helps my creative abilities but also gets me to i guess in a way challenge myself to using what comes with the game because i am an addict for custom content However, I do feel like I've been doing pretty well with the builds I have created with only the the game object. I did, however, have such a difficult time finding good chairs for the dining room and then also curtains. I literally could not make my mind up and I had to cut out a good chunk of that because it took me so freaking long. There isn't really any like TVs in the house. There is only one computer and that's consorts. And the only reason why he has a computer is because he is an investor, he's a businessman, but they don't have a television or anything because in The Sims 3, I am, yeah, in The Sims 3, Contessa is a technophobe. So even though we don't have a technophobe trait in Sims 4, I kind of played off of that too. I won't really go into the sims that I created or like their background story because I do plan on doing another video with the create a sim of them and then telling their story as a family and as an individual. That's one thing I really miss about like previous games is we can't really give an individual sim a biography, we only can give their family a biography. Which also reminds me, not only have I been rewriting a lot of the family biographies, I've also been rewriting the lot descriptions. So since this is the Cap estate, on the description for this lot, it's written, owned by the Cap family for generations, this estate will continue to be passed on the upcoming posterity. The question is, which heir will claim the residency next? Consort and his wife Contessa currently reside in the Cap Estate. They do have four children, however, their three grandchildren also reside with them in the estate due to their parents unfortunately passing away in which i'll get more into that whole background story in my create sim video of the family so definitely stay tuned for that i did end up changing up this living room a tad bit i added a piano because the family does really enjoy music so they have interest in piano and violin and classical music and whatnot. If you can't tell, I do predominantly use a lot of red. I can't really remember if in the movies it is like prominent that the Capulets are red and then the Montagues are blue, but I know in Veronaville that was heavily in the theme for both families. In the original build in Sims 2, Consort or Contessa is un not alive, but Consort's room is downstairs, so it's in the it's the same in this layout as well. I really love using the vanity table, but I don't like using the vanity table. <laughs> Mostly, I just like using it to spruce up a room, use it as decoration. Otherwise, I really hate using it using it i really hate playing with it so i always put a chair that they can't really use so that they can't use the table because otherwise your children always put on the makeup and i don't know it's just annoying since consort is such a big businessman as well he has his office upstairs and again 
only computer in the house, only form of technology. Although Hermia does have a drawing tablet because she is into art. I presume she had it way before she moved in with her grandparents. I really wanted to keep the house very traditional and not modernize it in really any way, although the kids or, well, teenagers' rooms are a little bit more modernized than the rest of the house. Upstairs is the is Consort's office, and then Tybalt's room off to the far right, and then Julia and Hermia's room on the left. Hermia does have a larger room because in this save she is the oldest out of the three. So I assume that she would either claim the bigger room or her grandparents would just say she gets the older room or bigger room. But I also really wanted Juliet to have the other room because of the balcony. Whenever I think of Romeo and Juliet, my mind goes to when she's outside of her window presumably a balcony, and she says the famous line of Romeo, Romeo, where for art thou Romeo. So I thought it would be really suiting that her room would be closest to the balcony. I did also put like, um, what is it? Like a water, a water pipe up along the house. So like, I imagine when Romeo sneaks over, he climbs up the, the water, <laughs> water pipe thing and goes to Juliet's room or they meet on the balcony type of thing. Unfortunately, both patios are pretty big and pretty empty. I didn't really know what to put on them, but I also didn't really think that it looked bad. I was going to try and put like patio furniture and stuff, but it just didn't look right with the whole home's aesthetic. I did put a, like a barbecue and everything on the back patio, but other than that, there isn't really much. In each of the teens' bedrooms, I really wanted to show their personalities. So like in Juliet's room, it's very pink, very girly. Um, she does have like love letters from Romeo, flowers. I feel like she would be not necessarily vain, but really want to look nice all the time. So I gave her a vanity table and same thing. I hate when they actually can use it. I just use it as decor some makeup and you know perfumes and things that i feel like would be something a, a girly girl would really like julia and hermia also share a bathroom it's sort of a jack and jill type of style so it it goes around into Hermia's room and then vice versa. Since the estate has been in the family for generations, I feel like this room would have been their mother's old room growing up and then Hermia's room would be their aunt's who possibly shared a room, which is why it was bigger, and then Tybalt's room would have been their uncle's room. So it all worked out pretty nicely in the book and in the movies. Julia is like supposed to be 14 or 16 and then Romeo is 18. So I feel like around 14 and 16 you're still kind of going between a child to obviously young adult and I feel like Juliet would be a little bit more childish so that's why I gave her like the fairy lights and butterflies, pictures on the wall with her friends and things like that. Whereas in Hermia's room I feel like she would be even though she is the oldest, I feel like she would still be very mature for her age. She's definitely not a girly girl like her little sister, Juliet. She still likes feminine things, but also gets along really well with their brother, Tybalt. Whereas I feel Juliet is just straight up girly feminine. In Hermia's room, since it does have more space, I did add a little bit more clutter, but I feel like it really captures her personality, she would be rather eclectic, and I feel like I represented that really, really well. Oh, I also put a pansexual flag in the room because I feel like Hermia would be pan. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like even though her grandparents are very traditional in the sense, I don't think that they would be very judgmental, and they would absolutely 100% back their grandchildren with any type of lifestyle they choose, except for, of course, interacting with the Montes. <laughs> I will say that 
both of Juliet's siblings are aware of her and Romeo meeting up occasionally. They don't necessarily know that they're in a relationship, but they are aware of Juliet seeing him on occasion. Hermia, in a sense, backs her sister. Tibble is absolutely against it. He does threaten Juliet sometimes that he'll tell their grandparents, but he loves his sister so much that he doesn't really want to take away or he doesn't really want to upset her in any type of way or lose her trust. One thing about Hermia that I really wanted to kind of show th in her bedroom is that she's very sentimental. I mean, she lost her parents and that was pretty devastating for her. And I know for a fact that I'm guilty of doing this, but I tend to keep little knickknacks that remind me of things. So I feel like Hermia in a way would do the same thing. For example, the chest by her bed, I do end up moving that, but I feel like she would have that filled with like old clothes or old books and pictures from when their parents were alive. I totally didn't think about it when I was decorating Hermia's room, but talking about it now and explaining it, I absolutely relate to Hermia. Tybalt's room is definitely the smallest of the three, so I try to keep it a little minimalistic. He's not much of a, I guess, a complex guy. He would be considered a typical teenage boy. I would imagine that he would go to the gym quite often to work out or even be a part of a club has won a lot of trophies from like wrestling or something like that you know if the sims had extracurricular activities aside from what is that llama scouts or whatever the the kids and teenagers can do i don't know but another thing about tibble is that he absolutely adores his sisters and he would do absolutely anything to keep them safe or out of harm's way. Especially since their parents passed away, I feel like Tibble would definitely feel like he is, he owes his parents that and his sisters. I said I wasn't going to talk about the characters too much, but look at me talking about the characters. However, I feel like it does go pretty well with explaining why I decorated their rooms the way that I did. The build is coming to about an end now. I do hope that you enjoyed this speed build, and like I said, I'm going to make a little series about it. Maybe it might not even be a little, because I have the whole entire save to do. <laughs> a lot of the lots won't be completely filled out like this. Um, I mentioned on my Patreon when I shared that I was going to be creating a new save file, majority of the uninhabited houses will be unfurnished but will have like a kitchen and a bathroom. If you would like to follow along on my journey of creating this save file, go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. You can follow me on Tumblr, my Instagram, or even my Patreon. I definitely will be posting a lot of the updates on Patreon. However, you do not have to pledge. None of that will be behind a paywall, but your support is appreciated. And with that, I would like to thank Pow, Tiffany, and Jen for your support. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching my video. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.